stewardship is this. It's managing the assets or the resources trusted to you by another. Now that's you and I as God's children, as his church, as his people, as his body, as his family. You understand we could keep throwing adjectives out there. You understand. And so that we are to, once again, what are we supposed to do? We're, we are charged with managing these things. You'll find that almost everything, you know, can start here and work its way down. You know, I pastor a church. It, uh, one of these days when I'm done, one of these days, okay, emphasis, not, you know, if you, you know, not next week, all right, no time soon. But one of these days, all right, I, I will be responsible how I managed my pastorate, this church, those God's entrusted me with. But that is true for all of us. So how do you manage yourself at, at work? How do you manage your career? You're going to like some of the stuff that we're going to teach. It's, it, 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 it'll help you. I'm, 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 uh, I just see a lot of great stuff to share with you. you, you you'll be blessed this morning. It'll help you. Again, we all must manage. How do you manage your marriage? How do you manage your personal resources? See, we have been trusted with these many things, our gifts, our talents, our abilities, by another. Dave Ramsey, who certainly would be an expert on financial management, but he, he would say also that they would carry over into these other areas. Stewardship is managing God's blessings God's way for God's glory. That's very well said. It's very well said. Now listen to this. Here's your first fill-in. I know last week it, you know, we, uh, we had multiple technical issues. And uh, uh, you, you, no, I won't tell that. It has nothing to do with us. I was in a very awkward place this week where they had technical issues and there was just nothing that you could do. What my, you know, what, you know, technology doesn't always work like it should. All right, here you go. You cannot understand stewardship. Now listen to this. Until you understand ownership. Get that? You cannot understand stewardship, the managing of another one's assets and resources, gifts, talents, abilities, relationships until you understand ownership so one of the things we have to do in our lives and we have to rethink is the issue of who does all this ultimately belong to you know we live in a it, this is a great time we live in isn't it it's a great time tremendous potential in the day and time we live in I know that there's, there's a lot of difficult things out here in society. We're, we're deeply divided. You know, there's, uh, there's no civility. You, you know, lots of... But, but then on the other hand, gosh, we live on the face of the earth in one of the greatest times the world's ever known. And the potential to be able to do things are just tremendous. They're, they're, they're unlimited. And don't lose sight of that. In the midst of all sometimes the chaos and the clutter and the, and, and, and the angry people that are out there. Ah, we, we live in a great day where great things can still happen. So we must establish, once again, ownership. You can follow along, once again, your Bible, your, your handout on the overhead. Psalms 24.1 says, the earth is what? So now we're talking about what? Ownership. Who's the earth belong to? The Lord. See, if you're going to take care of the planet, you don't take care of the planet, but you know, uh, you, you take care of it because it's the, the Lord's. We take care of the fields and streams because it's the Lord's. We manage wildlife in the area that we live. I always love it when people try to come down from the city, tell people who've lived in the country, we've had wild animals for years, and they know how to do it, and we don't. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. And the world and those that dwell therein. Amen. What belongs to God? Everybody say with this with me. Everything. Say that with me. Everything. Everything belongs to the Lord. What are we establishing? We're establishing ownership. Ownership. 
See, this is what creation does. Creation establishes ownership. Creation does. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says this, You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Again, what are we establishing? Ownership. See, we get to the subject of stewardship, you see how all-encompassing. That there is not anything, you'll say, well, you know, I'm going to give this to the Lord. No, no, I want you to know you're, you're giving back to the Lord what He lent you. Yeah. You're not your own. You know, what, you know when the Egyptians would die, the Pharaohs, and the Pharaohs, they would put, I mean, you know, it was not good when the Pharaoh died. If you were his doctor, because you die too. Or if you were one of his wives, you, you, you know what you get to do? You get to die too. Or if you were one of his slaves, Pharaoh dies, you die too. You know why? Because Pharaoh tried to take it all with him. He took wealth with him. They even took pets with them. Yeah, yeah. Where were the animal rights activists back then? When they died, they tried to take all this stuff with them, but we all know this. None of it made it. Somebody else eventually plundered it. Everything we have is just on loan. This life, it, again, it passes rather quickly. See, it says, once again, we're, we're, established, we're still establishing ownership. It says that in the beginning, God, what, what did He create? The heavens and the earth. What belongs to him? The earth and its fullness. Everything, including you and I, it all belongs to him. Genesis 2.15 says this. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. The Lord took the man, put him in the garden, and what did he do? Guard it. You and I are what? We're guardians. Stewards. Managers. To guard it, to keep it. God's entrusted us with a message. We must guard the good deposit that is in our hearts. We must, again, guard our relationships. Guard and manage our talents and our abilities and our, our skills. Guard it and what? And keep it. See, you've heard me say this many times, and I'll continue to repeat it after the years over the years, is that the first three books of Genesis I call the seed books of the Bible. You can find all, no, you can find every major doctrine established in those three books. Stewardship was in the beginning. He put man in the garden to guard it and to keep it. Do you understand that Adam's job was not to pull weeds? There were no weeds. This is pre-weed, Michael. Pre-weed. So that's not his job. I think most people see him as a weed puller. No, he was a guardian. He was a manager. He's watching over that which belongs to another, the earth and, and the fullness thereof, the, the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, everything that creeps upon the earth. So even the creeps. <laughs> Side note. Let's go to a real familiar text. Help you see some things. I, I, I really trust. Matthew 25th chapter, verses Beginning in verse 14, I, I, I should have, I believe we go all the way down to verse 25. I should have made that little uh, correction there. This is what is referred to as the parable of the talents. It is where our word today for talents, when we're talking about skills, gifts, ability, it is where we get that word. That's where it comes to us from. Though in that day, you were talking about a weight and measure of money. It is believed to be that we're talking about silver. Talents of silver. Some translations say gold, but the greater majority of people believe they're referring to silver because it was so much more widely used. A talent was 3, 
3,000 pieces of silver. 3,000, Linda. 3,000 pieces of silver. God has not entrusted you with some small thing. What it's worth varies, but it's worth a lot on the low end. It's certainly worth a lot on the high end. If on the low end, it's 500000 On the high end, it's a million. So these men have been entrusted with something significant. Now, you understand that in this culture, it's a patriarchal culture. It talks about men. Which you, you understand we're talking about mankind, everybody. Men, women, young, old. Again, I, 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 he says, so it will be, he's talking about, so he's talking about the kingdom. It will be like a man going on a journey. This is Jesus. What he's going he's gonna to leave them. And he's going to go on a journey. And so he's going to entrust his servants, these disciples, and then all of those are going to walk in their footsteps. He's going to entrust them with significant things. He's going on a long journey. Now he's going to come again, but he's going on a long journey. And he called his servants, he entrusted them with property. What is a steward? It's somebody that's been trusted with another's assets, the managing of another's assets, resources, or in this case, we use the term property. He's been entrusted property to them. He gave five talents of money. All right, to one he gave five talents of money. So we're talking about five times 3,000 pieces of silver. To another one, he gave two talents. To another one talent, now look at this, each according to his ability. Let's read that together. Each according to his ability. You may be given different responsibilities. But we are all required. He expects the same outcome. Another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Our abilities do different. That is what the Lord chooses. If you'll read 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter says, when it talks about the gifts of the Spirit, it lists those nine gifts given as the Spirit wills. All right? As he determines. God has said in the church some to be apostles, uh, apostles evangelists, pastors, and teachers. What, as, it, what, as it pleases him each according to his ability. Paul says, God has given me a trust. All right, he does say it that way. God's given me the trust. All right, the message of recon reconciliation unto the Gentiles, to, the, to, to those who are not Jews. To Peter, he's given him a trust. All right, different. His was to the Jews. So again, he went on a long journey. Then the man received five talents at once. What did he do? He put the money to work. He put it into action. And over some period of time, he gained five more. Everybody say more. more. All right. Now this becomes important. So also the one who received two talents, what did he gain? He gained two more. What? Two more. But the one man who received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Notice now the word, what's missing? What word? More. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who received five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me. See, he's a steward. I have received a trust. I am now, he understood. Now see, he understood the principle of being a steward. I know what you have trusted me with. You have trust, entrusted me with five talents. I understood my responsibilities. It was my job to manage those resources. Again, we could be talking about relationships. You say, I don't need any friends. It's not scriptural. It's not scriptural. I keep my faith to myself. It's not scriptural. The man who received five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, everybody say it, Well done, good and faithful servant. He what? He did a good job. 
Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Look at this. Come and share your master's happiness. Pause. All right, here you go. Who's the master? Jesus. Remember, and now where did he go? He went on what? A long what? Journey. Where's he at? He's at the Father's house. Isn't that right? Now, can I tell you, in good stewardship, there are rewards in this life, but there are many rewards in the life to come. Amen. Yeah. What you do in this life is impacting the life to come. What you're doing today is impacting your tomorrow, your eternity. Now, I'm not, this is not once upon a time. This is how it works. So, here we go. He says, my goodness. He says, enter into the Lord's... Oh, what? The Lord's happiness. My goodness. In His presence, there is... The Bible says, there is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Now, the man with two talents came. The master said... He, he said, Master, you entrusted me with two. See, I have gained two what? More. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Now, li look, listen. He's responsible for less than the other man. But he gets the same response from his master. You're responsible for what? Your gifts. Your skills. Your resources. Your relationships. His message. You've been faithful to a few things. I put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. So again, I... Another, we're talking about tremendous reward. There's rewards both in this life and the life to come. You know, it says in Hebrews that without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's Hebrews 11:6. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I'll put you in charge of many. Come and share the master's happiness. Now the man who had received one. Now there's so much to be learned from this guy. You understand a lot about the other men when you understand this man. The man who received one. Now he has responsibility, but it's the least responsibility. But it's based upon his ability. So really it's equal. It is equal. And then the man received, he received one, he, 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 talent, he came, he said, Master, I knew thou art a hard man. Now listen here. Here's the problem with believing that God is not a good God. When you think he is a hard, disciplinarian, angry, old man, you don't respond right. He's got the wrong picture of who he is. He doesn't start in the right spot. Therefore, he doesn't end in the right spot. Starting and ending are always connected. One man said, how you enter something is the way that you'll end up coming out of it. So here he goes and he, he, he said, "My, I knew you were a hard man. Harvesting where you have not sown. Where is it? How can he harvest where he's not sown? Is it possible? No. You harvested where you've not sown. Because see, even when he's not, the, you know, you might say, well, okay, there are some things that God didn't sow, he entrusted us to do, but we're still his servants. It all came from him. Harvesting where you've not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was what? Afraid. Do you know what happened to the last guy who was afraid of God? I go real quickly, or why don't we say, do you know what happened to the first God who, guy who was afraid of God? That might be a better way of saying it. 
It's called the fall. I was afraid. Remember, Adam, I was afraid. I was, I was, I was naked, I was afraid, and I was ashamed. And I what? I, look at, listen to this, John. I hid myself. What did he do? He took his talents. All right? He took, his, he, he took his gifts, his abilities, his resources, his relationships, his knowledge, his understanding, his, his experiences in life. And what did he do? Hit it. He hit it. I'm telling you, if you put corn seed in the ground, corn will grow. If you put silver in the ground, nothing grows. It tarnishes. It tarnishes. See here what belongs to you? See here what belongs to you? His master replied, you, listen to this, strong. You what? You wicked, lazy, ser- what do you call it? You wicked, lazy servant. You knew a harvest where I've not sown, gathered where I've not scattered seed. Well then, you think I'm that kind of guy? Should you not least put my money on deposit in the bank? Shouldn't I at least get interest on it? Couldn't you got a lazy man's return on it? Could you have not done something with it? I don't want to get too ahead of myself. So that when I return, that I would at least receive interest. Now let me share you... All right. Lessons from the parable of the talent. All right, the talents. We must all give account for how we manage God's resources. Each and every one. In the scripture, it's called the beam of judgment. Don't have time for it, but that's what it's called if you ever want to go do your homework on it. We'll all give account how we've managed God's resources. Everybody. Well, give account. There, there, there is a day that, you know, that it, it'll, it'll either be tried by fire and be seen as pure as gold or it all just burns up. Owners, all right? Owners have rights. Who has rights? Owners. You know, that's what's all goofed up about the day and time we live in. Everybody is stuck on rights. I got rights. Got my rights. Do you ever see the, the, the movie Gettysburg? I, I love gods and generals in Gettysburg. I've not seen them five times. I've seen them five times, five times. I love, you know, Peggy Munson's the only one who's maybe seen it more than I have. Uh, I loved it on surround sound. It was just great. You know, them cannonballs going off. Anyway, but this one man is, is from the north. All right, this, this northern lieutenant. He says to this southern prisoner of war, he said, what you fighting over? He said, my rats. He said, you what? My rats. You're who? My rats. He said, you're right. He writes, he said. Yeah. I got what? I got rights. All right. How many times you see stuff on TV today? What's it about? My rights. Thank God for rights. All right. We have the Bill of Rights. We've got a constitution that ensures rights. Everybody's fighting about rights. Stewards don't have rights. Stewards have responsibilities. Stewards don't have Stewards have responsibilities. You have been entrusted. See, as long as you're worried about rights, everything's self-centered. Self-centered. Look at somebody say he's talking about someone else. I just wanted to get you off the hook, make you feel a little better, okay? Owners have rights. This is what, see, these are the things you learn here. Owners have rights. Stewards have responsibilities. Genesis 128, God bless them. Now, here's the good thing, man. We have a good father. We got a good master. I am his servant, but I'm not a, I'm not a slave in bondage. I'm a, I'm a slave. I'm a love slave. That's what the New Testament calls us. We're bond slaves, love slaves. We're here by choice. God blessed them and said to them, be what? Be fruitful. Everybody say, be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. 
Subdue it. Now let me read this last part. Using its vast resources in the service of God and man. How many times have you heard me say, when people have made statements about our church being a rich church, and I've said, we're not a rich church, we're good stewards. See, there, there's a principle behind it. Using the vast resources in the service of God and man. That, I'm not going to apologize for that. The Lord the, Has the Lord entrusted, for a rural church, we're entrusted from very much. And I get it. We're in and therefore, very much is required. Very much is required. But you use the vast resources that he blessed them with. He blessed them what? So they'd be a blessing. Then he said this, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. Keep going. A steward, stewardship is important in both big things and little things. Big things and let. You know how many times I've had someone say, you know, again, my emphasis isn't money, but listen to this. You don't know how many times people said they were going to do something great for the church when they won the lottery. I'm going to tell you what. Help us out. Quit, don't, don't play the lottery. Give us the money and we'll do something good with it now. Amen or oh me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Bill. <laughs> you know, sometimes I would pay y'all to do this. In Luke, the 16th chapter, verse 10, whoever can be trusted with very little will be trusted with what? Oh, I'm on board. I don't know about you. He that is trusted with very little will be trusted with what? Oh, much. See, we, we, again, remember the rights? Well, it's just not equal. I'm telling you, we're talking about kingdom principles. You're worried about rights, and there's kingdom principles, and we miss them. We, our, our aim wrong. Our, our starting point is wrong. He's, everybody probably starts out with very little. Be faithful with very little. See, if you can't be very, you know. I remember when my take-home pay was $67 a week. And every week my tithe check was $6.70. And every time the offer, now mind you, understand, I started, my, my take-home pay was $6.70. Now, today, I don't do that, all right? Uh, now, I don't want to get into that. Let me just, that's what I did, and I'm being honest what I did then, all right? So I, I tied $6.70, all right? Then every time the offering basket went by, I said, Lord, I'll put something in it every time. I was faithful with very little. Now, what I help manage today is no longer very little. Now, that does not reflect my, and the church is good to me, when, okay? But does not, not reflect my overall income, but what I'm entrusted with. See, because that, that ultimately is what important. What do you do with what you're entrusted with? The gifts, all right? The gifts. I'm talking about, you know, you talk about, I'm not just talking about, I'm not talking about just dollars and cents. I'm talking about people. People. I'm talking about things where you, you have a, a, a vibrant we're we're gonna we're gonna kick the back wall out of our children's church because we got to because we have to because we have to all right and somebody say oh there they go again all right well if i were you i just ju i jump jump on board okay okay so uh, we, we're gonna do it because because well because 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 we have to all right uh you know that that if you're not excited about Celebrate Recovery, you just can't be made as excited. Yeah. If you can't be excited about... How many, how many young people did we have last, last Wednesday night? 48 in the middle of the summer. 48 in the middle of the summer. All right. Now see, if you, if you can't get excited, we're going to start a MOPS program next month. Help young mothers. See, see, we're not just talking about dollars and cents. We're talking about people, opportunities, relationships, needs. Listen, if you're not going to be faithful with just a little bit. Everybody say a little bit. You see, we don't think a little bit matters. A little bit can make a big difference whether it's good or positive. A little leaven leavens a whole lump in a bad way. All right? Unlike you're like me and you like raised bread and it works out very well. 
But you, you say, a little. All you have to do is be faithful in a little. Whoever is trusted with a little be trusted with much. Whoever is unfaithful or dishonest with very little will be dishonest with what's much. Be faithful with what, with, what, with, with what God gives you. See, that's what stewardship's about. And remember, abilities may differ, but you're going to get that. Remember, all right, that payday comes. Well done, now, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Ah, and I'm going to put you over much. Enter into the Lord's. Come share in the Lord's happiness. We, we all have the same responsibility, but we have different capabilities. So, see, you do, now, now, you know what's great about this? is you don't have to measure yourself by somebody else's success. The, these, some of these things are individual races. So you don't, you, you don't measure your success by somebody else's success. You, you measure it by, well, are you faithful with what the Lord has entrusted? Are you, well, again, are you faithful, again, in your gifts, in your abilities, your talents, your time, your relationships, your resources? If you are faithful in them, folks, you're a winner. You've done it well. You've honored the Lord. You have fulfilled what? Responsibility. There are different capabilities, and that's okay. That's fine. Again, he gave one man five, he gave another two. The guy who had five had twice as many, the guy who had two. Uh, best I read it, the very best I could understood. He said, well done, now good and faithful servant to both. He said, enter into the joy of the Lord to both. Come share with me to both. We all have the same kind of responsibility, but we just have different capabilities. You do not have to compare your, 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 your achievements or what you're doing in life to someone else. You, all you have to do is be a faithful steward where you're at. Good stewards, good stewards must be willing to take risks. Amen. Did you hear that? Amen. See, here's what we learned from the guy. He, how, many, how much did he have? Everybody say one. Uno. All right, showing off my Spanish. My French. Uh. Uh, okay? All he had was one. That's all he was responsible for, was one. He didn't have the same capabilities, but he had, he had a similar, he had like kind of responsibilities. They were the kind was the same. Didn't have the same capabilities, but the kind of responsibility was the same. So he took the one and he said this, I'm not taking no risks. I'm going to be safe. I'm going to be safe. No risks here. Nothing outside the box. I'm going to take this. I'm going to set it away. I'm going to make sure nobody can see it, affect it, impact it. I am a non-risk taker. I am a non-risk taker. Now, you have a guy who has been given, remember, 3,000 ta- 3, for each talent, one talent, 5,000 pieces of silver. He had 15,000 pieces of silver. And he took some risks. Where there's little risk, there's little reward. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Where there is little risk, there's little reward. See, if you don't risk reaching out to somebody who's in need, there's little reward. You understand? I'm 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 teaching this in context. I'm not trying to get you to write a check you can't afford to write. I'm not that silly or foolish or petty. I'm talking about the real things in life. Your giving's a part of it, but I'm telling you, it's so much more. It's, it's, it's so much larger than that. So much larger than that. Little risk. Little reward. Listen, listen to this. Remember, we're stewards. I have seen people sit around and allow their marriage to fail and wouldn't get any help. You know why? Because they would not risk their pride being impacted. 
Little risk, little reward. See, those who had much, they were willing to take some risks in life. You see, you've got to believe. You can do all things through Christ who strength you. If God's for you, who can be against you? God calls the unproductive servant wicked. How do you, whoa, whoa. Everybody say, whoa. Think about that. All right. He's not an adulterer. <laughs> okay. He's not a drunk. He's not a thief. Well, he's a thief in a way. All right. But you understand, not, not in the way. He didn't go out and rob a bank. He didn't kill anybody. And he calls him what? Wicked. I, I, this is what I want you to leave with today. God considers being unproductive as wicked as any other sin than one can commit. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get gospel light here. God calls the unproductive servant what? Wicked. wicked. He's a wicked servant. See, as good stewards, there is no... Now, this, this you should write down. All right? I heard you putting your papers away, okay? And I, I get it. That was your last note. You, you know, you're, you know, you say, okay, I got all my blanks f filled in. Now I can put them away. I know not having blanks for you guys last week was difficult, okay? For some, especially the type A personalities, okay? All right. As good stewards, there is no room for managing low expectations. You like that? Yeah. It'll help you. There is no room for managing low expectations. I feel like that we get way too good at that in life. Is managing low expectations. Remember, God's the owner. God has the right to expect a return. Right? He has the, he's the owner. He ha, he, remember, we said owners have rights. So when they come in and he gives account, remember he went away for a long time. One of these days he's coming again. He's going to look at the church and he's not going to say, okay, guys, how did we manage our low expectations when things weren't going well? All right? He, he is not that kind of Lord. He's not that kind of master. It's not the way things are done in the kingdom of God. He's not going to say, how did we manage our low expectations? And I said, well, you know, Lord, there was a lot of poverty out there. And then he's going to say, well, what would you do about poverty? You can say, well, Lord, you know, we were trying, but, you know, there's so many people sick. He'd say, well, what did you do for the sick? You'd say, well, Lord, you know, we, gosh, you know, we just, we just couldn't get anybody to help or volunteer. And he's going to say, what did you help, to help them to volunteer? See, he's not going to come back and want to know how do, how do we manage those expectations. When God comes back, he has a right as an owner to expect a return. Good stewards can expect a reward. My favorite definition of obedience, we've been sharing this forever. Obedience is not a cold command. It's an invitation filled with promise. Obedience is not a cold command. It's an invitation filled with promise. See, it, it, in life, you know, you know we, we talked about last our last series, how important the word was. Those are the kind of things, when I find something like that in life, like that definition concerning obedience, that was, that, was a, that was a moment in my life when I read that. I wrote it down, and I've tried to believe it and put it to work in my life. When he asked me to do something, it's, it's not a cold command. You heard me say, I ran for office. He told me, I set before you an open door. I didn't get through that door. I did everything I could to do. Then I got this, and I believe this. Obedience is not a cold command. It's an invitation filled with promise. I look for another door. You just look for a door. God has what? The right to expect a return. You and I as good stewards, we because of he is a good God can expect to be rewarded. So the next several weeks, we're going to continue to talk about the subject of stewardship. 
We're talking about managing everything that really belongs to him. You remember when Hannah had a child? I always love the scripture, how consistent it is. When she had Samuel, she went to dedicate him. She said, I, I have a child lent, L-E-N-T, lent to me by the Lord. You find out that when they get to be 18, 19, 20 years old and, and they begin to move on. It's part of life. It's part of the process. They were what? They were lent. Oh, they'll always be our children. But we had a period of time where we had to manage the parenting, the loving, the disciplining, the teaching of their lives. You and I are called to be what? Good stewards. The one steward was slothful, lazy, unproductive. You and I do not want to be that steward. Don't measure now. Again, don't, don't get caught in the trap that what you must do is measure, measure, all right? So I'll tell you something else. We need clothes. It's 10 to 12. I'm pretty close to on time, which is nearly miraculous for us. You know, sometimes people say, well, why do good things keep coming their way? You know what he did with a guy who mismanaged the one? He gave it to the guy who managed the most. Manage as much as you can. Amen. Listen to me. Manage as much as you can. Father, I thank you for your word. I believe that it's good seed in our hearts. I believe it makes a difference. That it changes us that it transforms us. We thank you.